The Pigs were a tribal confederation of peoples who lived in what is today eastern and northern Scotland during the late Iron Age and early medieval periods. They are thought to have been ethnolinguistically Celtic. Where they lived and what their culture was like can be inferred from the geographical distribution of Brock's Britonic place name elements and Pictish stones. Picts are attested to in written records from before the Roman conquest of Britain to the 10th century, when they are thought to have merged with the Gaels. They lived to the north of the rivers Forth and Clyde, and spoke the now extinct Pictish language, which is thought to have been related to the Britonic language spoken by the Britons who lived to the south of them. Picts are assumed to have been the descendants of the Caledonii and other tribes that were mentioned by Roman historians or on the world map of Ptolemy. Pictland, also called Pictavia by some sources, gradually merged with the Gaelic kingdom of Dalriata to form the kingdom of Alba. Alba then expanded, absorbing the Britonic kingdom of Strathclyde and Bernician Lothian, and by the 11th century the Pictish identity had been subsumed into the Scots amalgamation of peoples. Pictish society was typical of many Iron Age societies in Northern Europe, having wide connections and parallels with neighboring groups. Archaeology gives some impression of the society of the Picts. While very little in the way of Pictish writing has survived, Pictish history since the late 6th century is known from a variety of sources including Bede's Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum, saints' lives such as that of Columba by Adomnin, and various Irish annals. Etymology What the Picts called themselves is unknown. The Latin word Picta first occurs in a panegyric written by Eumenius in AD 297 and is taken to mean painted or tattooed people, as Sally M. Foster noted, much ink has been spilt over what the ancient writers meant by Picts, but it seems to be a generic term for people living north of the Fourth Clydismus who raided the Roman Empire. Their old English name gave the modern Scots form Picts and the Welsh word Ficti. In writings from Ireland, the name Crowthien, Crowthini, Crowthni, Cruthni or Crutini was used to refer both to the Picts and to another group of people who lived alongside the Arlaid in eastern Ulster. It is generally accepted that this is derived from Asterisk Crutini, which is the Goadelic, Q-Celtic version of the Britonic, P-Celtic Asterisk Pritani. From this came Britanni, the Roman name for those now called the Britons. It has been suggested that Crothine referred to all Britons not conquered by the Romans, those who lived outside Roman Britannia, north of Hadrian's Wall. History A Pictish confederation was formed in late antiquity from a number of tribes. How and why is not known. Some scholars have speculated that it was partly in response to the growth of the Roman Empire. Pictland had previously been described by Roman writers and geographers as the home of the Caledonii. These Romans also used other names to refer to tribes living in that area, including Virturian S. Turexala and Venicones. But they may have heard these other names only second or third hand, from speakers of Britonic or Gaulish languages, who may have used different names for the same group or groups. Pictish recorded history begins in the Dark Ages. It appears that Picts were not the dominant power in northern Britain for that entire period. The Gaels of Dalriata controlled what is present-day Argyll for a time, although they suffered a series of defeats in the first third of the 7th century. The Angles of Bernicia overwhelmed the adjacent British kingdoms, one of which the Anglian Kingdom of Daria, later became the most powerful kingdom in Britain. The Picts were probably tributary to Northumbria until the reign of Bride Macbelly, when, in 685, the Anglians suffered a defeat at the Battle of Dunnecton that halted their northward expansion. The Northumbrians continued to dominate southern Scotland for the remainder of the Pictish period. Dalriata was subject to the Pictish king Oengus Macfergus during his reign, and though it had its own kings beginning in the 760s, does not appear to have recovered its political independence from the Picts. A later Pictish king, Constantine Macferguser, placed his son Domnall on the throne of Dalriata. 
Pictish attempts to achieve a similar dominance over the Britons of Volt Clut were not successful. The Viking Age brought great changes in Britain and Ireland, no less in Scotland than elsewhere. By the middle of the 9th century, when Kettle Flatnose is said to have founded the Kingdom of the Isles, the Vikings had destroyed the kingdoms of Dalriata and Northumbria, greatly diminished the power of the Kingdom of Strathclyde and founded the Kingdom of York. In a major battle in 839, the Vikings killed the king of Fortriu, Eogun Makoengusa, the king of Dalriata Aed Macboanta, and many others. In the aftermath, in the 840s, Synod Macalpin became king of the Picts. During the reign of Synod's grandson, Constantine Macaeda, outsiders began to refer to the region as the Kingdom of Alba rather than the Kingdom of the Picts. But we do not know whether this was because a new kingdom was established or Alba was simply a closer approximation of the Pictish name for the Picts. However, though the Pictish language did not disappear suddenly, a process of Gaelicization was clearly underway during the reigns of Constantine and his successors. By a certain point, probably during the 11th century, all the inhabitants of Alba had become fully Gaelicized Scots, and Pictish identity was forgotten. Later, the idea of Picts as a tribe was revived in myth and legend, kings and kingdoms. The early history of Pictland is unclear. In later periods multiple kings existed, ruling over separate kingdoms, with one king, sometimes two, more or less dominating their lesser neighbours. De Situ Albany, a late document, the Pictish Chronicle, the Do and Albanac, along with Irish legends, have been used to argue the existence of seven Pictish kingdoms. These are as follows, those in bold are known to have had kings, or are otherwise attested in the Pictish period. Kate, or Cat, situated in modern Caithness and Sutherland. C, situated in modern Mar and Buchan. Sir Kin, perhaps situated in modern Angus and the Merns. Fib, the modern Fife, known to this day as, the Kingdom of Fife. Fidich, location unknown, but possibly near Inverness. Fotler, modern Athol, Fortriu, cognate with the Virturianess of the Romans, recently shown to be centered on Mora. More small kingdoms may have existed. Some evidence suggests that a Pictish kingdom also existed in Orkney. De Situ Albany is not the most reliable of sources, and the number of kingdoms, one for each of the seven sons of Cruthna, the eponymous founder of the Picts, may well be grounds enough for disbelief. Regardless of the exact number of kingdoms and the names, the Pictish nation was not a united one. For most of Pictish recorded history the kingdom of Fortriu appears dominant. So much so that king of Fortriu and king of the Picts may mean one and the same thing in the annals. This was previously thought to lie in the area around Perth and the southern Strathern, whereas recent work has convinced those working in the field that Moray was the core of Fortriu. The Picts are often said to have practiced matrilineal kingship succession on the basis of Irish legends and a statement in Bede's history. In fact, Bede merely says that the Picts used matrilineal kingship succession in exceptional cases. The kings of the Picts when Bede was writing were Bride and Necton, sons of Derylai, who indeed claimed the throne through their mother Derylai, daughter of an earlier Pictish king. In Ireland, kings were expected to come from among those who had a great-grandfather who had been king. Kingly fathers were not frequently succeeded by their sons, not because the Picts practiced matrilineal succession but because they were usually followed by their own brothers or cousins, more likely to be experienced men with the authority and the support necessary to be king, very likely to tanistry. The nature of kingship changed considerably during the centuries of Pictish history. While earlier kings had to be successful war leaders to maintain their authority, kingship became rather less personalized and more institutionalized during this time. Bureaucratic kingship was still far in the future when Pictland became Alba, but the support of the church, and the apparent ability of a small number of families to control the kingship for much of the period from the later 7th century onwards, 
provided a considerable degree of continuity. In much the same period, the Picts' neighbours in Dalriata and Northumbria faced considerable difficulties, as the stability of succession and rule that previously benefited them ended. The later Mormars are thought to have originated in Pictish times, and to have been copied from, or inspired by, Northumbrian usages. It is unclear whether the Mormars were originally former kings, royal officials, or local nobles, or some combination of these. Society. The archaeological record provides evidence of the material culture of the Picts. It tells of a society not readily distinguishable from its similar Gaelic and British neighbours nor very different from the Anglo-Saxons to the south. Although analogy and knowledge of other Celtic societies may be a useful guide, these extended across a very large area, relying on knowledge of pre-Roman Gaul or 13th century Ireland. As a guide to the Picts of the 6th century may be misleading if analogy is pursued too far. As with most peoples in the north of Europe in late antiquity, the Picts were farmers living in small communities. Cattle and horses were an obvious sign of wealth and prestige, sheep and pigs were kept in large numbers and place names suggest that transhumance was common. Animals were small by later standards, although horses from Britain were imported into Ireland as breed stock to enlarge native horses. From Irish sources it appears that the Elite engaged in competitive cattle breeding for size, and this may have been the case in Pictland also. Carvings show hunting with dogs, and also, unlike in Ireland, with falcons. Cereal crops included wheat, barley, oats and rye. Vegetables included kale, cabbage, onions and leeks, peas and beans and turnips, and some types no longer common, such as skirret. Plants such as wild garlic, nettles and watercress may have been gathered in the wild. The pastoral economy meant that hides and leather were readily available. Wool was the main source of fibers for clothing, and flax was also common, although it is not clear if they grew it for fibers, for oil, or as a foodstuff. Fish, shellfish, seals, and whales were exploited along coasts and rivers. The importance of domesticated animals argues that meat and milk products were a major part of the diet of ordinary people. While the elite would have eaten a diet rich in meat from farming and hunting, no Pictish counterparts to the areas of denser settlement around important fortresses in Gaul and southern Britain, or any other significant urban settlements, are known. Larger, but not large, settlements existed around royal forts, such as at Burghead Fort, or associated with religious foundations. No towns are known in Scotland until the 12th century. The technology of everyday life is not well recorded but archaeological evidence shows it to have been similar to that in Ireland and Anglo-Saxon England. Recently evidence has been found of water mills in Pictland. Kilns were used for drying kernels of wheat or barley, not otherwise easy in the changeable, temperate climate. The early Picts are associated with piracy and raiding along the coasts of Roman Britain. Even in the late Middle Ages, the line between traders and pirates was unclear, so that Pictish pirates were probably merchants on other occasions. It is generally assumed that trade collapsed with the Roman Empire, but this is to overstate the case. There is only limited evidence of long-distance trade with Pictland, but tableware and storage vessels from Gaul, probably transported up the Irish Sea, have been found. This trade may have been controlled from Dunad in Dal Riata, where such goods appear to have been common. While long-distance travel was unusual in Pictish times, it was far from unknown as stories of missionaries, traveling clerics and exiles show. Brocks are popularly associated with the Picts. Although these were built earlier in the Iron Age, with construction ending around 100 AD, they remained in use into and beyond the Pictish period. Cranagh, which may originate in Neolithic Scotland, may have been rebuilt, and some were still in use in the time of the Picts. The most common sort of buildings would have been roundhouses and rectangular timbered halls. While many churches were built in wood, from the early 8th century, if not earlier, some were built in stone. 
The Picts are often said to have tattooed themselves, but evidence for this is limited. Naturalistic depictions of Pictish nobles, hunters and warriors, male and female, without obvious tattoos, are found on monumental stones. These stones include inscriptions in Latin and Ophim script, not all of which have been deciphered. The well-known Pictish symbols found on stones, and elsewhere, are obscure in meaning. A variety of esoteric explanations have been offered, but the simplest conclusion may be that these symbols represent the names of those who had raised, or are commemorated on, the stones. Pictish art can be classed as Celtic, and later as Insular. Irish poets portrayed their Pictish counterparts as very much like themselves. Religion. Early Pictish religion is presumed to have resembled Celtic polytheism in general, although only place names remain from the pre-Christian era. When the Pictish elite converted to Christianity is uncertain, but traditions place Saint Palladius in Pictland after he left Ireland, and link Abernethy with Saint Brigid of Kildare. Saint Patrick refers to apostate Picts, while the poem Why God Odin does not remark on the Picts as pagans. Bede wrote that Saint Ninian had converted the southern Picts. Recent archaeological work at Port Mahomet places the foundation of the monastery there, an area once assumed to be among the last converted in the late 6th century. This is contemporary with Bride Mac Mail Sean and Columba. But the process of establishing Christianity throughout Pictland will have extended over a much longer period. Pictland was not solely influenced by Iona in Ireland. It also had ties to churches in Northumbria, as seen in the reign of Necton Mac Derili. The reported expulsion of Ionan monks and clergy by Necton in 717 may have been related to the controversy over the dating of Easter, and the manner of tonsure, where Necton appears to have supported the Roman usages, but may equally have been intended to increase royal power over the church. Nonetheless, the evidence of place names suggests a wide area of Ion and influence in Pictland. Likewise, the Cana Domain counts Nectarn's brother Bride among its guarantors. The importance of monastic centres in Pictland was not, perhaps, as great as in Ireland. In areas that have been studied, such as Strathspey and Perthshire, it appears that the parochial structure of the High Middle Ages existed in early medieval times. Among the major religious sites of eastern Pictland were Port Mahomet, Senri Monade, Dunkeld, Abernethy and Rosemarkey. It appears that these are associated with Pictish kings, which argues for a considerable degree of royal patronage and control of the church. Port Mahomet in particular has been the subject of recent excavation and research, published by Martin Carver. The cult of saints was, as throughout Christian lands, of great importance in later Pictland. While kings might patronize great saints, such as Saint Peter in the case of Nectin, and perhaps Saint Andrew in the case of the second Oengus Macfergusa, many lesser saints, some now obscured, were important. The Pictish saint Drostin appears to have had a wide following in the north in earlier times, although he was all but forgotten by the 12th century. Saint Surf of Colross was associated with Nectarn's brother Bride. It appears, as is well known in later times, that noble can groups had their own patron saints, and their own churches or abbeys.